Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. I've got another one from my favorite era of Les Paul standards. Well, outside of Kalamazoo and the modern day ones, anyways. This is one from 2006. We had just talked about these in the 2005 Les Paul standard episode. You know, that thing had a crazily flamed back. Well, this is the closest one that I've seen that rivals that one. And it just happened to be in a configuration that I did not own or kind of even realize existed. Because this was a Japan exclusive for the legendary dealer, Yamano Music. So Yamano has this reputation of only accepting the best of the best from Gibson. Anything subpar, they send back. To buy a Yamano instrument is kind of like a mysterious pedigree and getting one back within the US because they are a Japan dealer, and it just kind of makes it kind of cool. Are they necessarily better guitars? I mean, that's a case by case basis. I've had a few Yamanos. It's just kind of cool to add to the title of these things. But wait till you see this example. So inside here from 2006, right before they started chambering these things, we have this. A gold top with P90s, kind of like a, a 56 reissue in a roundabout way within the Gibson USA plant. Nowadays, a P90 gold top. Not all that special. You can order one of these brand new. It's called a 50 standard P90. At the time of recording this episode anyways, they only come in the gold top finish. But you have to remember, at this time, look over here, it's a 2006 serial number. Something like this just didn't exist in the Gibson lineup. P90 pickups in general were actually rather scarce to find within instruments. Now that's not saying that there aren't some. I'm just saying generally everything had humbuckers. So to have a limited edition with P90s from this era is really fascinating. So I wanted to pick this up and document it because again, Japan exclusive, it's cool. And let's check out this back. Not as nice as my other one, but it's pretty darn nice. So I don't know what to call this type of mahogany, but I almost want to call it like tiger scratch or something because you've got these very deep lines in the wood grain. Those don't move. So there's one right here, here. You can kind of see what I'm talking about, like claw marks going But then you also get that light flame figuring underneath that. And oh man, this even has that yellow grain fill to it like the 80s Les Pauls do. I just love examples like these, especially when you can see it on the side. I mean, just look at that. You can't see as much figuring on the sides of this, but it's kind of cool, especially when you have kind of a boring gold top as far as, you know, wood grain and flame lovers go. And I get people saying all the time, why do you care about the back? You don't see that while you play it. Well, I mean, you can see it when you just appreciate the guitar. You can see it while you're playing it, the edge wood grain is just something to make you smile. I mean, I would argue you actually see the edge of your guitar more so than you do your top. Because looking down, I mean, look at my GoPro view right here. What do you see more of right here? The side or the top? Guess it depends your playing style. Now it does look like this example has experienced some finish checking. That's common around the knobs. Normally that's due to some sort of a light trauma or you have a sparkly metallic finish, which we kind of have in this case, so I'm not too worried about that. We've got some random spots around the rest of the guitar, but it's got a decent little belly to it. But just like that other one, it's pretty chunky. I would probably guess 10 and a half pounds on this one. So how can you tell you have a Yamano guitar? Uh, it, it's kind of hard unless you have the original paperwork. Like they don't mark them Yamano anywhere. But if you have original paperwork, you can flip through it and you will see this special Gibson booklet that says Yamano music on the bottom. Now, just because this is in a guitar that says Yamano, I mean, somebody could potentially find one of these for sale separately, throw it with a guitar just to say, oh yeah, this is a Yamano. I mean, as far as verifying that, I mean, you might be able to call Gibson and see if it initially was exported out to Yamano music in Japan, but I really wouldn't suggest putting too much value on paying anything for being Yamato. Buy it because you'll like it as a normal guitar, and this is just a coolness factor. But to find out more, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside our P90 gold top here, let's check things out. So just regular P90s, Gibsons generally don't have any type of branding on them. Sometimes you will have a sticker, but that generally comes later than 2006. So this look like this 
basic P90s. And they've got the cream covers over top of them. When I removed this pickup for a second, I thought, oh, is that a long neck tenon? No, that's actually a spot. So these screws actually don't go into the wood, which is strange. You don't see that all the time. Normally they just use a pointy screw. So it does go into the wood and you see the like whole smiley face that you see on like the vintage ones. But no, for whatever reason, they have the base plates in here, but they decide to route that out. So they're threaded in here. Well, that was interesting to see. Another interesting thing is they only secure it using one screw. That was true on both cavities, just one on the bottom instead of the normal two. Now it's interesting here, once again, you can see how they routed out these pickup cavities, but you can see LPS, Les Paul Standard 60s neck. And then I always thought the P stood for a plus, but maybe it stands for something else because sometimes you'll actually just see a plus written. I suppose it might be like a G for gold top, but I don't know on that. But inside here, you can see your maple top with mahogany body. This is the nine hole weight relief era, unless they decided to order these special. Without an x-ray, I can't really tell you for sure. However, what is interesting, if you get this in the light and see it at the angle just right, you can actually see, there's your two piece top, but you can also see the vertical wood grain, just like we saw on that 2005, just hiding underneath this gold finish. I mean, you've really got to get it in the light and be looking for that though. But the pickups within the circuit read 7.86k ohms in the bridge, and the neck position about the same, 7.93, so our in-between should be around 4. We've got two volumes, two tones, with the gold bonnet style knobs, with the thumb bleeders on them. The rounded off versions. But we can take a second to go over the top. Lots of finish checking. I've started to really appreciate the character of this guitar. You know, at first I was like, ah, it's a shame it's got nicks and dings, but it's just kind of a cool player's model. There's like some scratches right here from a player picking. Got some light dings into the top. Looks like there's a small finish check right there. Got some scuffs, some more dings. Looks like a ding from like maybe when they're restringing it or something. Got a finish check line going from there. Small one right here and there. Just kind of depends what angle you look at when these will show up. There's like a hairline one there, right here, there. There's like one that just runs right along the edge. Then all those ones by the knobs. It's a small ding right there from our pick guard. And then you've got some right here in the cutaway. But what I found funny is I found another one of these on Reverb that it sold a while ago. It's got like the exact same checks in the exact same areas, but it's a different guitar. So sometimes vertical finish checking and weird checking in certain areas around the knobs can occur because of how they applied the finish, like it didn't cure properly. However, finish checking around the knobs like this can also mean the guitar was dropped. There was a lot of force. Generally, vertical finish checking means something bad happened to the guitar, whereas horizontal finish checking, that's just natural aging. So for this run, I'm guessing it's just how they applied the finish. Like say the humidity wasn't right or the finish wasn't mixed well enough. I've heard of that and that definitely seems to plague certain runs of guitars. Here it is a uh, 2006, just like this exact same areas doing the exact same stuff. The photos are a little bit dark, but I think you can see what we're talking about. Same finish cracks by the tail pieces, right by the knobs. Sometimes it just happens on certain runs. That brings me to the hardware. The reason I looked that up is this looks strangely modern. I don't believe this was disclosed to me, but these are actually modern parts. So here we have the Lightweight Advanced Plating Incorporated Branded Bridge with the Lightweight Aluminum Tailpiece by Advanced Plating. That's not what these look like at this point in time. So these are modern day parts. The biggest giveaway is this is the version that you can use an Allen key to adjust your height of the bridge. Not really that big of a deal. Easy enough to replace that back to original stuff if you really wanted to. And on the pick guard, it looks like somebody saw that ding forming, so they put a white backer on it right there so it wouldn't get any worse. But now, moving on from our maple top and mahogany body, we get to the mahogany neck and the rosewood fretboard. This fretboard is really strange. Like, most rosewood doesn't quite look like this. It looks to me like somebody might have used, like, a type of oil to condition this instead of, like, the normal lemon oil. But this fretboard looks really nice, and it feels extra smooth. So whatever was done to this, or maybe it's just they used a higher wood quality for the Yamato run, that's some cool rosewood we've got going on here. 
but you almost have Les Paul classic like inlays on this one, especially on the third fret right here. It's got that greening to it, whereas all the other ones, they're, they're pretty basic. It's just your acrylic inlays here, not real mother of pearl. 22 medium jumbo style frets, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, 12 inch radius, nothing crazy here. We do have some fret wear on the first couple of frets. Nothing super deep, I would say the worst area is definitely like here and there. All the other frets don't look half bad. Level recrown would remove everything without removing too much life out of the frets. The nut measures 1.68 inches and 2.07 by the 12th. First fret necked up the 0.83 and by the 12th 0.89. Yeah, that is slim. Here's what that looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. You can see it gets skinny but wide at the 12th, whereas it's a little bit more rounded and more uniform at the first. When they called this a 60s neck, they certainly meant it. And I really like that I now have one that has the 50s sticker on it and the 60s sticker. Because most people would be like, eh, that's ugly, and they'll just peel it off. But this is a survivor for nearly 20 years. Something else I want to talk about this run is... The binding seems abnormally yellow, like compare that to pure white for a second, you can just see how yellowed over that is. Here's another one I found on Reverb that appears to be fairly clean, but the binding on that one is also extremely yellow, so that just must have been a spec that these things had. Strangely enough, their third fret inlay is the only one that has some yellow in it too, maybe that's another spec. Our truss rod is looking to be in great shape, Les Paul model silkscreen. Gibson Mother of Pearl logo, vintage style Clusen tuners with the bushings instead of the screw-on style, and you get that nice, slightly skinnier headstock profile. But anyways, the fact that this is a 60s style neck is actually going to make a lot of people happy because the modern day equivalent of this guitar only comes in a 50s neck at this point in time of recording. So hey, if you've always wanted one of these from Gibson USA, seek yourself out one of these. The limited edition Yamano run with the slim 60s neck. And now we flip it over to the beautiful back. Once again, you can see all those claw marks on the thing. It's just a really cool back. I've definitely seen at least one other one have a very similar back to this. Maybe not this particular model, but I've seen a mid 2000s standard that has something going on like that. So anybody that knows their woods, I'd be interested. Does this actually have a name or phenomenon behind it? Because it is just really cool looking. It gives the mahogany such character, especially when it's got flame figuring dancing along it as well. But inside here, this is what the electronics look like. You've got some Gibson branded pots. There's an orange drop capacitor right there. You can read the codes there, but interestingly enough, no capacitor on that one. It actually bridges over onto into here. So I'm not sure if that was a special thing for this run or if somebody's modified this because those brown back plates you saw earlier, those were modified because the owner didn't like the black ones. I'm gonna go ahead and put the black ones back on. Just because when I make the reverb listing, there's less things to disclose that have been replaced. The back definitely has some light scuffs on the back. Nothing too over the top. This is actually a two-piece back. I know it might look like one, but if you get it in the light just right, you can see the seam right there. The side profile, that's where it's at on this one. It almost has like a marbled effect to it. That's cool. Here's our thin binding in the cutaway. Now the other side that you'll see while you're playing. Not quite as cool as the other side. I really like that part. Looks like we got some light finish bubbling around the strap button. Wouldn't surprise me if strap locks were on this at one point in time, then somebody swapped back to the original style and that's what caused that. But the back side of the neck, this is just your standard mahogany neck that you would see in this era. Not necessarily any flame figuring or anything, but it does look quite. But moving up the back side of our headstock, we get double line single ring Clusen tuners, made in USA stamp, 2006, 163rd day of the year, initial batch, 395th guitar stamp that day. Let's check it out under blacklight real quick. Everything's glowing the way I would expect to see. You can kind of see some of those nicks and dings a little bit more clearly. Even the knobs have a little bit of an aging glow to it. Not a lot, but look at your plastics. That makes me believe that yes, this is natural aging, but everything black lights on the front the way I'd want to see. Now on the back, you can see those scuff marks we were looking at earlier. It looks like uh, maybe a strap was in the case or something and kind of marred the finish. But other than that, we're actually looking pretty good here, including on our sides. So now we'll go check out the neck, which everything is also looking good. 
for right here. Always important to check your headstocks. All said and done, how much does this one weigh? Wow, 10 pounds, six ounces. Not as bad as the other one, but it's still pretty chunky for a Les Paul. So I think my ultimate suggestion to you is if you like chunky Les Pauls or you like really cool wood grains, go for the early to mid 2000s that have the fancy looking backs. They're always ridiculously heavy. I mean, this one's not too bad. But if you like them lighter, go for the more traditional looking backs. But let's go ahead, plug this one in and hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and run through the tones of this. I'm digging these P90 pickups so far. Start with our neck position here. Try our bridge. Now the middle position. Yeah, I like that middle position. That's just great. Lots of chiminess, but a little bit of honky tonk at the same time. That might sound a bit better with some distortion, so let's go ahead and do that. Bridge pickup comes just way to life with some of that.
Now that we know all about the P90 Gold Top Les Paul Standard, this one particularly being a Yamato Music exclusive, that doesn't mean every single one of these that you do find is necessarily the Yamato exclusive. It was just one of them. What are my final thoughts on it? I gotta say, I, I just like P90 pickups, I think, better than humbuckers. For most situations, it really depends what you're trying to play. I think those bluesy style riffs, the P90 pickups just really sing that stuff better. This neck pickup really comes to life. That bridge pickup is great with some distortion. And this is a ridiculously resonant guitar. Every time I strum it, the entire neck is just vibrating like crazy. So that's kind of nice because most of the time when you get these like awesomely cool figured backs, they're really heavy guitars. But despite this one, you know, looking heavy on the scale, it's well balanced. It feels great in my hands. And this is a really nice player. It has a really nice velvety smooth fretboard. It really reminds me of baked maple but baked maple wasn't in Gibson's literature at this point in time. And getting to try this 60s neck, at first I, I didn't think it was all that comfortable, but then it just kind of gets out of your way as you're playing and I found it nice. So there you go. If you always wanted a P90 gold top that has a 60s neck, seek one of these guys out because that's what they have. Generally, P90 gold tops, they have pretty beefy necks. So it's nice that these things do exist. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.